Hey guys, it's Poe back again with another video. It's been quite some time since I've been able to upload, but I'm very excited to bring you today's video. Today we're taking a look at how well the 3900X can overclock, and as you can tell by the title of this video, we decided to brute force our way to some good clocks with this chip, since Ryzen 3000 is much the same as its previous generations in regard to overclocking, if not a bit worse, we wanted to see how well this chip would do on a water chiller. For this video, my friend Alex headed on over to good old eBay, picked up a CW5200 industrial water chiller, which is commonly used for things such as welders and CO2 laser cutters. This will pull down to zero degrees Celsius, but will not do sub ambient. This was fine for our use case because we really wanted to avoid having to insulate the board with something like Vaseline. We'd considered doing this as a live stream, but I figured a video would make it a little bit easier to follow and more concise instead of six plus hours of rambling footage. So with that, let's get started. For our first run, we left the hardware completely stock. This was automatically pumping 1.47 volts into our chip, which had us sitting at around 10 degrees Celsius for the CPU and the socket temp at idle. On our first run, we scored an acceptable 3278 CB points in R15. During this run, our socket temp hit a max of 14.4 C and our actual CPU temp saw a max of 51 C. This CPU temp has left us wondering if the CCDs being offset from center makes them a bit tougher to tame since they aren't directly under most fin stacks when being liquid cooled. Next, we went ahead and started increasing CPU clocks. We pushed it up to 4.4 gigahertz on all cores, but left the memory stock for now. Unfortunately, the BIOS on our X470 Crosshair did have some memory overclocking issues, though we did end up finding a workaround, thankfully. From this point forward, since we are looking for the best scores we can get, we did go out of our way to set Cinebench priority within Task Manager. On this 4.4 GHz run with memory at 2133, we were able to score a respectable 3404 CB points. Next, we chicken clocked it up another 50 MHz to 4.45 GHz. At this point, we were still a bit unsure of whether or not we had a decent sample, and we're still running 1.4 volts, which fell just shy under load to 1.375 volts. Still with stock memory, our score improved yet again to 3445 CB points, with similar 14C socket temps and actual CPU temps peaking in the 50s. At this point, we got somewhat tired of just increasing clocks by 50 MHz each run and went with a shocker of 100 MHz this time. Daring, I know. With no other changes and an all-core frequency of 4.55 GHz, we landed at 3521 CB points. This is where we decided to end for the day and do some research into fixing our X470 board's memory overclocking issues. Part of our memory issue was that this BIOS would not allow the computer to boot with DRAM voltage at more than 1.2 volt. The other issue was that if we tried any reasonably high memory overclock, it not only wouldn't allow the computer to boot, it would actually brick the motherboard altogether and require us to use QFlash to get back up and running. On a side note, this BIOS also broke compatibility with Corsair keyboards which caused a whole host of other problems and left us booting the computer without the CPU fan header populated so that it would throw an error and then allow us time to switch USB ports for the keyboard and then actually be able to get into the BIOS. Having all these issues, we settled on using a maximum of 1.2 volt on DRAM and trying some slightly lower memory overclocks while babysitting our CPU fan header during every reboot. Man, what an afternoon. After a full night of sleep, the gang reassembled on day two ready to push our chip as far as it would go with our newly developed method of overclocking the memory. We started by chicken clocking the RAM below 3000 megahertz since we had so many issues the day before. Finally, we figured out that even though DRAM voltage was stuck at 1.2 volt when being set in the BIOS, we could actually manipulate it post boot through Ryzen Master. This was the ticket we needed to some decent memory overclocks. We were able to hit a maximum memory clock of 3800 MHz, but dialed it back to 3466 CL16, which gave us the best performance. 
These memory settings coupled with an all-core overclock of 4.575 GHz netted us a best score of 3590 CB points and at that time had us in 6th place overall on HWBOT. That score has now fallen to 9th overall, but we are still darn proud of it considering some of the top scores were achieved with Sub-Zero cooling. It's worth noting that we were able to hit an all-core overclock of 4.6 GHz, but saw performance regression at that speed. And that's going to do it for this one, guys. Even though we had several issues on day one, I had quite a bit of fun using a water chiller for the first time, and I hope you all enjoyed coming along for the ride. If you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to Let's Get Techie. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, it should be in Digi Plus. Yeah. Why is there a two? I would suggest just put both of them to the same thing. Well, <laughs> one goes up to four and one goes up to seven. Put them both on four. I can. They're coupled. Alright, we'll do that. We'll do... Okay, that one's at six. Yeah. Six is a pretty normal number, so we'll just... <laughs> I like how you said that six is fairly normal. I don't know. Well, it seems like a normal number.